Good evening. Hello, Veronique. Good evening. So tonight you are here to... And I'm happy to be here. Yes. I must say. And you will present all the night on uh, handle the question at the end. You mean all the night? All the night. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because we have a lot of things happening this... Okay. Yeah, tonight. So I'm here. Have fun. Thank you, Jean-François. Um, again, I would like to say how happy I am to be here uh, for this new, this third uh, session of uh, lectures of Type Paris. Uh, I will now introduce our first guest tonight. Uh, it's Nicolas Durek. Uh, Nicolas is a typeface designer from Croatia where he studied. He then studied uh, in Italy and then moved in the Netherlands where he studied at the postgraduate master type media that most of you know uh, for sure at the Royal Academy of Art of Den Haag. Um, he's a founder of the digital font foundry called Typo9 uh, that merged uh, after a while with uh, Typotech. Um, his typefaces, um, I will name a few, uh, are um, Tremolo, Balkan, that he will talk about a little bit. It's an amazing typeface that he designed uh, and that can be both used in Latin and Cyrillic languages. And that's something uh, for Croatia. Maybe we'll talk about that, yeah, of course. Um, and uh, he has a prize at the Type Directors Club in 2012 for uh, the Balkan typeface. Um, uh, among his typefaces are also Type 9 and the plotter or Amalia, uh, a typeface that he called after, he named after hi his uh, grandmother's, grandmother grandmother name. Yeah. I think it's nice. <laughs> uh, uh, so uh, to name a few typefaces and uh, he gained uh, an international recognition for uh, the quality and the innovation of his typefaces all over the world. Uh, following 10 years of collaboration with Peter Bilac, um, he, um, Nicola became a partner of Tipotech in 2016. Uh, he's also very concerned about uh, transmission. Uh, that's the reason why he's also um, uh, developing a real uh, scene, typographic scene in Croatia. Um, he's a teacher at the Art Academy of uh, Split and at the University of Zagreb also. Um, and he's a Croatian country delegate for ATP uh, that you, of course, know uh, too. And last thing, this, presenta this presentation sorry, wouldn't be complete without mentioning that Nicolas, also a drummer, I'm not saying dreamer. Uh, maybe also. Maybe. <laughs> but he's also a um, great wine and beer lover. And also he's producing beer and wine. So maybe something we should talk about later. Please welcome warmly Nicolas Durek. Thank you. Thank you all. Uh, first of all, I want to uh, thank Typo Paris, Jean-François, Veronique, Dave, all the students that I met today, they're amazing. Uh, it's great to be here. So today I will talk about the, uh, not text typefaces, I will talk about my display typefaces. They have some like extra purpose or extra, I don't know, intelligence, let's call it like this and I'll present the Balkan project uh, at the end. So let's start. So this is my name, Nicola Jurek. Uh, uh, as, uh, yeah, I work at Typotech with Peter Bilak. So let's start with the uh, Audrey type system. So for uh, quite a long time, uh, I was thinking how to make typeface they can then you can really choose your own style you can choose the serifs you can choose the contrast you can choose the uh, kind of contrast the uh, expansion transition or things like this so idea is uh, to make typeface that can be 
let's say, a little bit more intelligent than normal typefaces. So I look at the references. One was the Peter Bilak history, so where he, where he uh, have like different serifs or different swashes or different effects. But it's, it was basically just one typeface, and then you can stack uh, things on top of each other. It was layer, a layering font. So I want to do something different, so I want to look further. So I, find, I found this. This is a uh, Frutiger, uh, not Frutiger, it was uh, uh, the guy. Oh, I forgot. It was uh, Matthew Carter, of course. It was the Walker font that he did, so he can, you can basically just uh, choose a few kind of uh, serves and a few kind of endings, and that was basically, basically it. So I was looking what, what kind of typefaces there is, classification, what kind of servers we have. So all these kind of uh, servers, endings. And of course, uh, you probably, students all know, the Nordzai cube. So you can really uh, see the two types of contrast and uh, going to high to long contrast. And so my idea was to embed all this possible situation into, into one font. So this is pr basically the same thing, but just on the left side you can see the broad nib pen, and on the right side you can see the pointed pen. So if you see the top line is probably something like Dido or Bodoni, and the bottom line is uh, Helvetica on the right side, and the from the left side is like Times New Roman to Gil Sans. So all this combination are included in this ordinary type system. So it's going from both kind of contrast to low contrast to high contrast to pointed pen and to, to broad nib pen. And of course, weight highs, but uh, weight axis. So I choose for the 15 types of serifs. Some of them are like well, historical serifs, and some of them that I made up for, like that example, this one, it's not like it's some kind of bitmap or, but you can usually, you can see like, like probably most known serifs in these uh, two rows. Also the two type of contrast. also the low and high contrast and also there's like some kind of special features stencil inline and stencil with inline and at the end you get uh, these 512 uh, uh, combinations with 15 kind of servers so it's like it's really huge system and you really kind of know how to use it, but it's really good also for, I show it to students so they can really play with it and choose the kind of ser serious contrast, type of contrast, so it's really nice uh, to use it. It also interesting that some letters are the same, for example E, but if you put it in different contrast, it's E is quite different, I mean it's not it's quite totally different. So you can see some of the combinations. Also some of the serifs and the contrast. So it's uh, all the all the all these five hundred uh, styles are uh, not all of them, but most of them like were practically manually current current because you see on there's some service are long, some service are short, some service are without service, so you need to current like probably from five hundred like well two two hundred uh styles uh, need to be current. And 
and I found this on, on the internet. I didn't do that, but there's all all possible serifs that are in, in this Audrey type system. Somebody download all the PDF, extract the illegal font from PDF and make this. And uh, in the on the website, it's it's not that big problem to choose. You you can there's application. You can choose the what, which kind of service you want. Which you can choose the construction. You can choose the amount of contrast, and you can select the style. So normal stencil inline on stencil with inline. So it's really easy to choose one of these one of these styles. It is a little presentation of this. Research engineers in laboratories talked of the experiment to discover new. This is the best picture supplies we have. This the magnetic tape is used to store data required in working out the climate. Used to a magnetic drum or tape. Another compact in the identification room on the large screen. So that the company may know where it stands financially. You program by heredity and environment. Early equipment was crude. More than two million digits can be recorded on a single reel of tape. Yeah, so basically, <laughs> thanks. <laughs> So basically, this shows what, what what can you do with just one typeface and so many styles. So I I was quite happy when I finished that project. It took it took me with my friend almost two years to finish it. And at the end, uh, there's a one carpet company in Zabok. So we start to make carpets, and I choose this Audrey system to make the carpets, and they all the carpets are made with hand. They're extremely high quality, and so you can buy it if you want. So this was in process. So you see like um, 12 combinations of the Audrey A. This is in the process. They're doing all this by hand, and it's really in the finish, it's look really, really nice. It's a perfect home gift. <laughs> yeah, this is my studio, so you can see how it looks. So let's go to gradient projects. So this is the projects that I was uh, talking about uh, in the beginning. So the typeface, they, they do more than like normal typefaces. Let's say this, they have some intelligent or less intelligent open type features that can do some work for you. So first was a start with first of these projects was, Del was Delvard gradient. Uh, all of these typefaces have has a normal styles and normal text weights and everything, but the, in this presentation I will show only the display uh, part of it. They can do some magic. So this was inspiration. This was uh, one magazine for Croatia from Art Nouveau period, which has really black and really thin letters inside. It, it was called Vienas. This is the first thing that I digitalized. It was, uh, this is an expansion, a pointed pen. So it looks like this basic style look like this. And the second style look like this. So at one point I was thinking, what can I do with these two extremes? So I put just high and then I type high there with all this weight. And so I was thinking how to, how can I program it to work really in uh, in normal software like in design illustrator and you get results like this so there's a few uh, so this is like you can see every word has it, it goes from tint to the black so if it's a word with just two letters it will go really thin and really black but there's a lo lot of things that you can you can change here it can be like this. It can be gradient for all text block. 
So from the left is thin and to the right is black. And you don't have to worry about that because font is doing all these things for you. It can be from the right to the left. It can be f in the middle, it's going like waves. Right, and when you type it, it really looks like this. So this is not fake, this is just typing in, in InDesign. So it calculates all the possible combination and makes the things uh, looks gradient. So inside, outside, from left and from right. And w w I had this presentation in school, so one student asked me, uh, how do you make this flash? It's not flash, it's just screen capture from the InDesign. <laughs> also, also like this. So it, it depends how many, how many words are in the, in the, how many letters are in the words, so it's calculate the amount of gradient. Second similar project was Francis. Of course, as I told you, this, this is like fully functional, a little bit uh, headline typeface. It was uh, inspired by European advertising for the early 20th century. Also, it's the uh, expansion pointed pen. This is like normal styles. It's quite really narrow, but when it's go to the heavier styles, it get quite also wide. But think, the thing that I want to explore here because of this really uh, condensed and really uh, extended uh, uh, weights, to how t can I make this extra, extra style called gradient to work? So this was really condensed. This is like normal in, in, uh, in really heavy weights. So idea was this. So it can vary in width from also from left, right, inside, outside. And it's also font does er all the things for you. You don't have to worry about that. But of course you needed you need to design all this uh, from really narrow to really wide. So it's not font doesn't do it for you. You need to design all these things, but you need to make it work. It can look something like, like this. You can see in, in bottom line, Titolo, you can see O which is really narrow and O which is really wide. Same with the T. And block of text can look like this. So also inside, outside, or right and left. So you can see how it moves. And it also can be applied to the block of text or just to the one word. This is some examples. Also here. This is how it looks. So you can, as I wrote, you can do mastering in one word or in in the more words. So you can see when it's go from the left to the right or just one word when it's going to gradient. And it was really interesting that last year, oops, last year they, the Grammy Award used this typeface as, the, as their identity for the whole show. And they really play with this with music and music was going uh, I don't know, loud or did they use white or, or narrow letters. So next project, Plotter. Uh, this was inspired by 
the architectural yeah, drawings. This, is, this was done, my, done by my father. He was a civil engineer. So I took this, digitalized it. And again, I was trying to, to push it forward, 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 how, how far can I go with this? So it has the, the, I don't know, the normal styles, rounded styles, uh, only straight lines, only patterns, some things like this that they usually use in architecture. But my m most interesting thing was to make, again, some kind of the gradient project, as I call them. And this was a, this is the, the last line. So my idea was to have uh, nine combinations, as everything to me is number nine. So from the far left to the far right. And you can interpolate all these things and you can make nice text patterns uh, in between. So idea for this was this uh, sheet that I found. So you can see they used all these uh, different angles in, our, in architectural uh, drawings. So this was my first proposal to have it also left from right, right from left. And the third line is uh, random. So you have the really weird, 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 weird look of the, of the topography. Yeah, it looks like this. Of course, it's not really usable, but it's nice. And usually these things don't sell that much, but it's really f fun to do it. So this is random, so every let and you can imagine that all these things should be spaced and current separately because it's random. So it's really a lot of work. And we go to Tremolo. Tremolo was a, is typeface based on the Gutenberg uh, Biblia. It's exactly the same proportion of uh, each letter as the uh, Gutenberg textura, not Gutenberg textura, as, as a textura. But I, add, uh, but I add, add so many things to it so it doesn't even look like textura at all. If you see the, the light styles, if you see the shadow styles, if you see the this uh, gradient style on the top right. Different styles and voices packed the, into the single design. Yeah, you know the guy. <laughs> of course, also the Bible. And this is from the Bible. I mean, uh, it's not from the Bible, it's like I copied it from the Bible with, with pointed, with the uh, Brodny pen. So this is Brodny pen. And this is how it looks, normal style of tremolo your stencil looks like this. So exactly the same proportion as the textura. But you can see it's really contemporary. Uh, ascenders and descenders are different, but just like, uh, like color, uh, it's almost the same. And there's a stencil style and there's a normal style. And then I drew the tin because you, d you usually don't see black letter as a tin, so I designed this and also tin as a stencil. So you can really see how it looks compared to the textura. It's totally different, but, but I took the starting point was textura. And the text style looks like this. This is a stencil style. This is a tin, and this is a tin stencil. And this is how the whole family looks. But then I got to again to some kind of the open type intelligence, let's say that. So I, I call also this project gradient project, because you can choose 
colors from the bot bottom and which colors of the top. And you can also choose the amount of the connection uh, between, uh, in this case, red and black. And you can get nice examples like this. And so this is a possible combination. If you see top left is quite, quite uh, rough, then you can see really soft top right. Bottom left is long and rough, and this is uh, some uh, shadow styles. And also on our website, you can, when you want to buy the font, you can choose the amount of the, you can choose this uh, connection, uh, how it looks, and you can just take that and you download the style, which one you want. Don't look at the prices, it's... Uh, And then I designed some poster with it, so it's really nice to use it. Different tones and different voices back in the single design. And this is really perfectly matching to to the bottom and to the to the top style. And you can buy this poster if you want. I'm not forcing you, just telling you that. <laughs> A little movie about it? So thank you. <laughs> also nice specimen that I designed for it. You can see in press it's also really perfectly matching if the printer is good. And the shadow styles. And uh, Gordian was the last project that I did with this kind of not last, last before the next one I will show you. <laughs> uh, this was based on the Tryon. Uh, I think some of you today also chose Tryon for their inspiration. I choose like something like called Sans Tryon with uh, lower cases and everything. So I finish all the family and everything. But again, my idea was to make something special with it. So you can see it on the bottom line. This is again some kind of a gradient project that I that I choose. That has all kinds of okay uh, different uh, alternative letters, but this is the thing that I was most uh, excited. You can see like Borgo word. You can really see it's like going. Like I, I call this style Gordian knot. You know the Gordian knot is like going up and up inside and everything. So it, it has uh, four style. It has eight styles. Four styles is like going uh, south, west, east, and uh, of course at four four directions. But also it can go in the circles. It can go random. It can go cir circles in the like low doesn't. Uh, look like really disturbing and also you can go random in in low you can s you will see the few examples so i and again you need to draw all these things so you can see circle straight random and random this is uh, because uh, open type features are not uh, random you cannot they are not program language so you need to kind of fake it but you can fake it really good, so it really looks random. And you see the knot style, so gradient knot, you can see 
how it works. So you can work in all directions with all kind of uh, things. There's like 10,000 glyphs in one, one, one font file. And the last thing, this is still not published yet. This was a uh, typeface that was inspired by blues records from the 50s. This is our basic styles, but then again, I went to this uh, experiment, then you can have gradient in, in, in height. So, Nicola Jurek returns to its exploration of text patterns and gradients. So you can have it on the top, you can have it on the bottom, you can go from left to the right, you can go from, you can see inside, you can go from the right to the left, and inside. And you can create this kind of, uh, this kind of uh, patterns. It will be published later this year. And the last thing is the Balkan project. I'm okay with time, yeah? So the Balkan thing is totally different than all these things that I show you today. But it's uh, really kind of important to me because this was also my part of my PhD, but also I'm teaching a lot of students uh, with this uh, hi Croatian historical uh, moment. So Croatia, of course, Croatian language is Slavonic language. We have South Slavonic, Croatian. And if you see from the Slavonic list of languages, only these scripts use Latin languages. Other use Cyrillic languages. So this is Croatian alphabet. We have uh, five letters with uh, diacritics. And we have two, uh, three letters with uh, the diagraphs, so j, l, i, n. So you need to, of course, to know some of some about them to so you can so you can design it. So this is Croatia. Probably some of you know where it is. If you don't know where it is, you can see Italy. So it's so uh, during the the history, the, we used three languages and three scripts. We use uh, Latin, uh, Old Church Slavonic and Slavonic, and sc for scripts we use Glagolitic, Cyrillic, and Latin script. And if you see the picture of the of the Croatia, so this is really dividing on the West and East uh, uh, Church, how to say it, Roman Empire at that point. So most of the languages spoken, uh, written from the right side are written in at least in former Yugoslavia, they were all written in uh, Cyrillic, and from the left, they were written in um, written in Latin script. So this is our former state called Yugoslavia, and this is Croatia, as we as you and me know it today. Uh, and also, see, it's I just found that. Uh, uh, you can see it uh, on the Google Maps that, for example, Croatia is written in the in the, and Italy and Slovenia written in the, of course, Latin and Bosnia, Serbia also written in in the, in the Cyrillic script. And we got uh, this is a story about that what is happening in Croatia in last uh, five or six years. So these people are protect protesting against Cyrillic script. So imagine that people are really protesting about against the script. And story is is this. So there are a lot of them in a few towns. So this uh, uh, green mark is a town town called Vukovar. So uh, 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 in uh, in before 20 now six seven years there was really big war happening in my country especially in in this part so uh, the we Croatian were written uh, written uh, in Latin and uh, Serbia were written in Cyrillic so the people really connect aggressors to the script 
which is wrong, of course, but yeah. But that's the story. This book of art looked like this in the middle of Europe 26 years ago. So they say, you can see, we defended Vukovar, but not Vukovar. They defended the Latin script, but not Cyrillic script. C Croats don't need Cyrillic script, says that guy. So the uh, story is, uh, if the 30% if the of the people are from uh, other nations than Croatians, like Serbian, they are allowed to have their script on the all the government institutions. So, uh, so government put all these double, uh, how I say, double tables with the Latin and with Cyrillic script. It it's of course says the same thing, but it's in two scripts. But then people in Vukovar in, were really uh, offended and angry about it because they were connecting this uh, Cyrillic script to the aggressors. So story begins like this. really see the anger and the passion and the sadness of the people so this is how it looks and there's a also a deeper story that that this guy lost to his sons in the war so it gets really really emotional and th this is happening not still but it was happening during so they put a new ta new table and then another uh, other day also they destroyed. They say return the Latin script and everything will be okay. So they put more police to watch for the tables. And then again it, it happened. So they put even the fence and everything. And even more police. And the guy that's making money to make tables all every week, he was really happy. <laughs> and. The, at the end, they just put the Croatian flag on the on both of on the both scripts, or just or just the Cyrillic part. So this is like symbolic picture. So me, and, uh, Maria, Yusa, and me was thinking, how can we unite these two scripts? It can be like visible to people and that can all so we designed this balkan system so it's a cyrillic and latin script combined together and you can really read it you can cyrillic can be on top or latin can be on the bottom or or also other way around so this is how it looks So this is a this is for example a Dom Sindicata in Sarajevo. They use both scripts as official, but maybe they can use it like this. I'll go faster with this because this is the uh, diacritics and the diagraphs. This is how it looks. This is trans transliteration. The Balkans produ the Balkans are European Smith. They they have been the screen into which Europeans projected their dreams, and the, that and this has been their doom. This is by Slavoj Žižek. Uh, Žižek. The Balkans produce more history they they can pr consume. This is uh, Winston Ch Churchill. Little short movie about this project. Balkan sounds hybrid typeface system for inter-Balkan communication. Balkan is a new typeface system that consists of Latin and Cyrillic scripts. 
It is based on the study of a phenomenon known as Vulcan Spratlin, a term used to describe neighboring languages whose sound and grammatical features have merged because of their proximity. The typeface system also represents an attempt to identify the features shared by some South Slavic languages and alphabets like Bosnian, Montenegrin, Croatian and Serbian. We focus on the dual literacy that characterizes Slavic peoples, many of whom use and transliterate both Latin and Cyrillic alphabets. Historically, there were three scripts in this region, Cyrillic, Latin and Regalitic. The use of Latin and Cyrillic typifies the former Yugoslavian countries, today Serbia, Bosnia and Herzegovina as well as Montenegro. Historically, both scripts in this region were bearers of cultural, ethnic, religious and political identities but their communicative and symbolic functions were often out of step just for the sake of multi-ethnicity. On the other hand, close development of languages and scripts throughout history resulted in shared properties. Today, some regional languages in the Western Balkans are so similar that they can even be thought of as dialects. The Balkan typeface system is a series of fonts that decodes Latin and Cyrillic. It demystifies, that politicizes and reconciles them for the sake of education, tolerance and, above all, communication. The Balkan is a font in the usual sense. It can also be used to translate Croatian Latin into Serbian Cyrillic and vice versa. One could therefore think of the fonts as the educational software capable of reconciling discrete scripts. Like all open type fonts, Balkan can be expanded to include the Russian, Macedonian and Bulgarian alphabets. Balkan songs and Balkan song stencil consist of four styles. Three of them have different alignments. For example, all uppercase characters are Latin and lowercase characters are Cyrillic, and one style consists of uppercase Cyrillic and lowercase Latin characters. Balkan Sense deals with the concepts of transcending cultural barriers to often educational software which promotes new ways of understanding and using topography and typeface design. In 2012, Balkan Type System received the Type Director's Club Certificate of Excellence in Type Design. Um, you can see some Balkan in use. This is uh, really big uh, Serbian newspapers in Croatia. And you can see the, the hammer is the guy from the guy that was smashing the table. Also some examples. It's, it was. It, it's still quite popular in in the Balkan region. Also, nice typeface done by me. <laughs> some movies, posters. Also, some posters. I didn't design this. I just found it. And you can really buy a nice black and gold or black uh, red and gold poster. And you can. This is my dog. So it's called Tito, like former Yugoslavian president. Uh, I have one more, two more projects, but uh, my time is uh, done. So thank you very much, and I hope you enjoy it. <laughs> Maybe some of you have questions. Thank you very much, <laughs> Nicola. Who's the first one? <laughs> All is clear. <laughs> I explained it so good, it so everything is clear. Everything was so clear. <laughs> I'm joking. <coughs> La question d'Hervé Aracil. Donc. Ça va être très simple. Thank you very much. And I've seen the use of Balkan typeface. Mm -hmm. But for the first ones, all, all the other, the gradients with the gradients, have you seen uh, people from literature or from the art scene using this typeface? Like, for example, you, you can say uh, the Jenny Holzer or Lawrence Weiner are uh, connected to typeface design or to typeface. Yeah. Yeah, and, uh, and uh, for example, uh, some pieces of poetic uh, of poems or things like that, not yet? Uh, maybe not for poetic, but I see the gradient projects are really used a lot. 
the really nice use is now in uh, in Venice Biennale. So they they're using the the Del Vard gradient project for the Montenegro and Croatian projects. So it's really nice to see how they use it. Uh, only problem with this type of faces if you use it once, then it gets so uh, like known. So you cannot really use it for many projects because you know it's used for something else. But, it, but these gradient projects are quite uh, good. I, many people use it for the exhibitions or anything, things like this. Not for poetry. I didn't see it for poetry yet. Yeah, yeah maybe. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Another question, maybe? La question de Pierre Roche. On sourit parce que je pose souvent des questions quand je suis à une conférence, mais uh, my question is about uh, the programming involved into those gradients projects. Mm -hmm. You didn't say anything. Is it top secret or could you tell us how it works and it's part of kind of... Uh, scripts uh, you could introduce a few um, um, themes or a few uh, ideas connected mm -hmm. to this uh, it's process it's not secret because if you buy the font you can really see it how it works you can code this inside of the font file so it's not secret so so it basically it's uh, tons of the classes and things that you you must say Okay, if this word is before that word, it needs to be thin. And if that word is before this word, it, sh it should be a little bit darker. So it's, it's because it's open type, it's not program language. So you need to really like explain it like to a child what, what to do. So if you have, okay, there's a six letter. So first should be this, second should be that, blah, blah, blah. And then you have nine loops because I have nine gradients. And so it's repeating all the time. So it's not secret, it's not something special that I made and I s we sell that font and if someone can e want to use this uh, code, uh, it's up to them. But uh, as, I, as I told, of course it's done, so it doesn't make sense to, to redone it again. So it's my share, like, okay, I done it, I give it to people, you can use it, yeah. One more question. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. À peine 14 ans après sa création, l'iconique école de design du Bose fut fermée par le régime nazi. De nombreux trésors et chefs-d'œuvre inachevés y furent abandonnés, cachés aux yeux du monde. Reposant sur l'idée de former une nouvelle génération d'artistes pour créer un monde meilleur, le Bauhaus a jeté les bases du design moderne tel que nous le connaissons aujourd'hui, changeant à jamais la créativité. Dans l'Allemagne des années 1930, toutefois, les idées progressistes du Bauhaus étaient considérées comme une menace, rendant inéluctable la fermeture de l'école. Mais parfois, ce qui a été oublié avec le temps peut renaître à tout moment. de Bohos est toujours aussi puissante. À partir de maintenant, vous pouvez créer avec un morceau d'histoire.